Are you looking to derive a timestamp or a date field based on dynamic interval in Data Studio? Hi, welcome back to the Analyzer. Today, we'll be learning how to add or subtract X number of days dynamically using calculated field in Data Studio. This is actually inspired by one of my subscribers' question. So, thanks to Deepa. After some research, I found there's two different ways that we could use to approach this question. In this tutorial, I'm sharing the first method which is to use a parameter to control the interval, then using a date time add or date time sub formula to add or minus the interval from a date time field. Users then get to select the interval in the control filter and the calculation will be adjusted instantly based on the user input. This is super super cool. So let's get straight into it. The very first step is to create a parameter. Click on one of the charts and hit add a parameter at the bottom right of the screen. Next, give your parameter a good name. For example, day interval parameter. Then add data type, choose number in the bracket hole. Because the date time calculation formulas accept an integer number with no decimal points as the interval period. For permitted values, these are the values that are going to show up in your control filter selection. You have three options here any value, list of values, or range. Basically, for list of values, you will need to define a set of fixed values for the interval. For example, 1 day, 5 days, and so on. Whereas for range, you get to decide the minimum and maximum number. Then, the number will be populated in sequence for you. You may also leave it blank by choosing any value. However, for any value, you will have to use the input box instead of the drop down. So, user will need to key in the value in the box. The good side of it is that users can key in any numbers that they want, not limited by the list of values that we set. And one thing I found here is that if you try to input a decimals, which is not um, the correct data type, it will go back to the default value, which is at 5. If you want to be more strict with your users, you can use the list of values. So here you can define your own list and the values for the users to select. So in this box, I will key in 1, 5, 7, and 14 days. To add any subsequent value, just click on add another value below. Just a side note, these are the number of days that I'm allowing the users to select. If you are calculating for hours or other units instead, then adjust your numbers here accordingly. Lastly, you can set a default value. This will be the interval value that Data Studio would use to perform the calculation in the case where no user's input is provided. Now, let's close this window and add a control filter in the dashboard. Next, drag and drop the new parameter we created just now into the control field. You can see that the filter select 5 days by default, as that's our default parameter value. Click on the filter. If you are able to see all the values that you set earlier, you are all good to go. Next, we'll be creating a calculated field to add an interval from a date time. I believe you already know how to do this if you have watched my previous tutorial, but for our new friends here, you can create a calculated field at the bottom right, hit that and name your field with a meaningful name. Then add formula, key in the formula date time underscore add, if you want to subtract the interval instead of addition, simply change the formula to date time sub and the rest of the instructions remain the same. Next, add a date time column followed by comma, key in interval, 
for integer, in our last tutorial, we key in a fixed number here. But this time, because we're going to make it dynamic, you have to use the parameter that we just created. To add the parameter, just type in the name as usual. Oh, I just realized that we couldn't do that. So in this case, we will just go to available fields at the left hand side and search for it by typing the keyword or simply scroll through the list. Lastly, don't forget to indicate the unit of the interval duration. For my example, I'll use day part. Just a small tips here. If you forget what is the interval being supported in Data Studio, you can click on the formula, make sure you select the text color in green, and there will be a quick documentation popping up for that formula. So you can find the unit name there very easily. Now that we have completed this step, let's click Save and Finish to close the window. Now, let's add the new calculated field into the table so that we can see the changes in the calculated date easily later when we change the parameter. Finally, it's time to test out whether all the steps are being done correctly. As usual, we will switch to view mode and you should be able to see that the dates are calculated using the default interval, which is 5 days. When we choose 7 days instead, you should see that the calculated date values are all recalculated based on the selection. Last but not least, I have a bonus tip for you for staying till the end with me. If you wish to make the experience even more user-friendly, there is one small and super simple trick that you could do, which is to label the interval. So instead of showing just the numbers in the filter, we could actually show the labels like one day or two days in the control. Let me show you quickly. Let's switch to edit mode first. Now look for the parameter, it's in pink color which makes it very easy to recognize especially if you have a long list of fields. Click on the icon on the left of the parameter and then in the window, scroll down to permitted values section. Here, there's a label section here. If you don't relabel it, it will actually follow the number by default. Now, we're going to change the label for all the values here. After you're done with that, remember to click save before you close that window to make sure all the changes are recorded. Yes, this looks super great on the dashboard. I'm really glad to discover these tips and make a tutorial about it. I find that this could be so useful for what-if analysis. Say for example, you are partnering with company A to send your parcels, but your customer wish to shorten the delivery time frame from 5 days to 4 days. So you want to know how possible it is with this partner based on the parts data. Talking about logistics industry, we could also use the similar date time formula to calculate whether the parcel has been delivered successfully to the end consumer within the time frame in service level agreement, which is SLA. However, if we use more than one delivery partners and they all have different SLAs in real life, it wouldn't make sense to use a parameter to calculate the interval. That leads to the next tutorial where we would set a conditional interval to determine if the order has met SLA or failed SLA based on the different delivery partner service that we subscribe to. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to get notified when the next video is up. As usual, if you wish to support me to continue sharing data visualization tips, you can like, comment, subscribe or coffee me. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.